yeah, it's horrible. It's again, so 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 the whole thing that I was trying to get away from the fakeness of it. Now it's become fake in another way. They've taken something that's really good and pure that was meant to to better everyone's life, including the women who are meeting these amazing men who who are, who are working on themselves, and they've corrupted it. Hey everybody, what's going on? My name's Sasha. Uh, I thought I'd make a little response to the BBC documentary on pickup artists and dating coaches that are out there today. So, so I was heavily into this stuff for a really, really long time. And I was actually the first guy who put up a video showing day game, which is the art of, uh, you know, meeting and attracting women during the daytime that went viral back in 2011. And since that happened, a lot more people started like doing this and eventually coaching this. And it's just kind of a thing that's happening all over the world now. So I really want to explain a couple of things here because I, I feel really bad watching this video because there's a lot of guys out there doing really stupid, seedy, manipulative stuff that actually is not the intention of day game at all. And the reason I started day game was so that we could get away from all the manipulative, dodgy stuff that goes on normally with guys who are trying to meet women, right? So at least back in the, back in the day, I don't, I don't even know what's going on out there now, but I'm assuming this is still going on. Men don't have the courage, the chutzpah, the balls to walk up to women they're attracted to in real life and say, hey, you're gorgeous. Do you have a boyfriend? I'd really like to take you out for a coffee sometime if you're single. They, they don't. I, I know men should be able to do that and it's not really a big deal, but they can't and they don't because it's a big deal. They're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of what are people going to say? What do people find out? She rejected me. I'm not good enough. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm probably not rich enough. She probably has a boyfriend. Million and one excuses that men come up with. Okay. So, so most guys would go to clubs and maybe through friends, they'd meet some women or whatever, but a lot of guys would get drunk. So they would have the courage to talk to women. And some of them, unfortunately, would be preying on women who've had a few drinks and they'd go for those. Not, not so cool. So basically, or in the, and this has been happening throughout history, there's many people who've come throughout, throughout time, uh, starting in the 80s, more so in the 90s and the 2000s, they were teaching uh, pickup techniques. So what to say, what psychology to use, um, what stories to tell that would impress the girl. Some guys would do magic, some guys would do uh, other, I mean, God, there's all kinds of things out there to try and uh, convince or manipulate or impress women uh, to sleep with you, right? That, that, that's basically what it comes down to. All of that stuff felt really, really fake to me. And I've tried it all. I started getting into this stuff in the late 90s. So I was there kind of in the beginning of, of, of one of the big, big waves of uh, pickup and seduction. And it all just felt really fake and phony and just ugh, disgusting. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Okay. So somewhere around 2005, six, I really started getting into this stuff. And I decided to do something a little bit different. I wanted to meet and connect with women, but I didn't want to lie, cheat, manipulate, bribe them, or get them drunk, or go to clubs. All of that stuff just felt wrong. So I did something a little bit different. I decided I was just going to go out there, walk around the streets, and like go into coffee shops, um, normal shops, malls, subways, whatever. And when I would see a woman I was really genuinely attracted to, I would just go talk to her. That's it. I'd start a conversation. I might say, hey, great walk, great shoes. Hey, you got a beautiful smile. I really like you. Hey, do you have a boyfriend? I mean, whatever. I tried all kinds of different things, but fundamentally, I was, I was not lying about my intention, to intentions or pretending that I didn't like them and, and acting like, you know, like I'm not really interested. No, no, no. I would walk up to them and I'd give them a direct compliment. I'd tell them they were attractive and, uh, and, I would, uh, and with the intention of getting them on a date with me. That was, that was clear. That's, that was my thing. Okay? So the whole thing was called direct day game. I, when I started, people told me, like, don't do it. No, you can't really do that. It's not going to work. You got to go to clubs, all this kind of stuff. Everyone thought it was crazy. I started doing it. I started coaching other guys, making videos, talking about it, blah, blah, blah. One thing led to another. There's guys doing day game all over the place, not just in London where I was at, all over the world. Like, I would go to other cities and people would be running around talking to girls, and I'd be like, okay. So here's the problem with that. The problem is when men realize that they can go out there in the day and come up to women and actually sex becomes a possibility, they, some of them, they focus only on the sex. And when they realize, oh my God, I can actually get sex from women or get a girlfriend or whatever, they become absolutely obsessed with just getting as much sex as they can, as they can with as many women, women as they can. Like it becomes like an addiction, like a, like a drug, like a game, right? Literally it becomes like, it is the game. That's what we call it. It's called the game. Um, and so we lose all like rationality or like feeling or genuine connection. And just like it's all lost, that magical spark 
you know, the whole the whole point of everything I was teaching was that so that when you saw a woman and you felt that moment in your chest of like, oh my God, she's so beautiful, that no that deep inner knowing of like you want to go meet and connect with somebody, that's real. That's authentic. I, I think that's us on a soul level wanting to connect with another soul. Sure, there's an a tr physical attraction there, but it goes deeper than that. And how many times in my life I've felt that genuine connection where I just wanted to meet someone and, and see what would happen. And, and I didn't do it because I didn't feel worthy or I was afraid of rejection and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. The amount of times I felt horrible just wondering what would have happened if I, if I said hi to that woman. Maybe she would have liked me. Maybe we would have become friends. Maybe she would have been my girlfriend. You know, maybe, we, maybe that was the, the mother of my future children. I'll never know because I never said hi. That's a crappy feeling, and that's the reason I started doing day game, and that's why I was teaching it for years, uh, and it and it ch and it changed the lives of thousands of people. People email me still to this day. People recognize me on the screen. Say, hey, Sasha, you know, blah blah blah. I got a girlfriend because I saw your videos all the time, and that's good. It's a really really good thing for you to be empowered to take that part of your life into your own hands and not live like a freaking coward. You know what it was like when, when before I got into this stuff. In my teens and my early 20s, I was absolutely a coward. It, it felt horrible not having the courage to express myself on such a basic level of just coming over and saying hi to somebody. It's terrible. And it's no way to live, really. And it's getting worse with the Tinder culture and all this online dating stuff. It's getting worse and worse and worse. People have less social skills now than 20 years ago, right? It's, it's brutal. Anyway, so my point is this. When men realize that you could just meet women in any situation and sleep with her. Of course, they decided, okay, we, we, got, we need to get better at this. We need to come up with systems and methods and structures. And so, of course, people systemized it, what to say, what to respond. What, what do you do when she says this? What do you do when, when you say that? So it became like, not even like a game. It became like a program, like a format. It, yeah, it's horrible. It's, again, so, so, so the whole thing that I was trying to get away from, the fakeness of it, the fakeness of alcohol and clubs and showing off how much money you have to get women, now it's become fake in another way. Oh, I'll just meet a girl in the coffee shop. Then I'll be fake and pretend to be someone I'm not and impress her and, and, and tell these stories that aren't even mine and, or, and do whatever other manipulations to try and get this girl uh, to date me. You know, so it's really gotten out of, out of hand and out of control. So, so in a way, I, I kind of feel bad because, because they've taken something that's really good and pure that was meant to, to better everyone's life, including the women who are meeting these amazing men who, who, are, who are working on themselves. And they've corrupted it, and they've made it into a, a something dirty and sleazy. It's something just it's mechanical, something just just to get sex, like it was nothing. Like it was uh, like you might as well go to a hooker, to be honest. In fact, going to a hooker would be more authentic than approaching a thousand women, pretending that you're interested, so that you can get dates with ten or twenty, and then end up sleeping with two or three. So the BBC did this uh, documentary exposing uh, pickup artists and seduction coaches and all these guys who go around trying to get women into bed. And they, they really picked the worst people to show in this thing. These guys were really low frequency, low consciousness, like dodgy. Like if, if one of these guys was walking towards you and you were in the alley, you'd be like, oh, we better get out of here and you'd, you'd go the other way. Like that level of dodginess. Like, so, so that really makes me wonder, like, what were they trying to portray? Well, they were really trying to make it look like really bad. And some of the scenes even, it li literally looks like they're in a gang. It's like this one guy and he's up, they're wearing overcoats and they're blurring the faces and they, they play the, the, the music and they slow the, the slow mo it. So it's just like, oh my God, these guys are, they're evil. And, 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 and really, you know, most guys aren't actually evil doing this stuff at all. Um, but there was a lot of fair points made. It was really, really sleazy. There was dodgy stuff being taught, but it all stems from the one belief uh, which is not being good enough to actually be who you are to attract amazing women into your life. And several people who rose to prominence uh, many, many years ago, uh, they really didn't believe in themselves and they came up with all this stuff that you need to do to fool women or convince them to, that you were cool enough to sleep with, right? Whether it be magic tricks, telling interesting stories that aren't even your stories, uh, you know, dressing a certain way, um, showing this image that you're, you're rich or you're successful or you're connected or whatever, just to impress women to get them into bed. But the thing is, guys, those shortcuts don't work. You don't need to impress anybody. You're already good enough as you are. You just need to realize it. So back in 2015, I, I, I gave up on the pickup. It was, it was too fake. And even though I was teaching people to be authentic and, and come up to women and be totally honest about their intentions, even with that, because it was mainly about getting women into bed, uh, and it was just so repetitive, like go out there. and t I, I just didn't want to teach it anymore. I just, I just quit. And I realized actually that the most important aspect of what I was teaching was the social freedom element. It wasn't about like say this or do this to get her number or do this on the date. Like all that was part of our dating courses. 
But the thing that was really changing people's lives and empowering them was the social freedom aspect of it. The fact that you would be free in any moment to express your truth to whoever's around. So if you're walking down the street, a woman walks by, she looks at you, you look at her, she smiles, you smile, and you think, you know what? I think she likes me. I really want to meet her. And you have the courage to, to walk up to her and say, hey, how's it going? Yeah, beautiful smile. I just want to say hi to you. What's, what's your name? You should be able to do that as a man. You should be able to do that as a woman, too. So we empower men to be able to do that. But it takes work. So we actually go and we look at what are their beliefs, what, what are the things going on in their head, the, the mind programs, the patterns, the societal beliefs, the, uh, the self uh, beliefs that are stopping them from being able to just express themselves authentically. Mostly they're bullshit, right? And we expose them as bullshit. And I have a series of exercises I take people through where they challenge that little voice, that little that ego, right? That says, oh, you're not good enough. She probably has a boyfriend. She's going to reject you. What will people think? We actually train you to separate who you are from that voice, to see it as a critic, and actually to shut that voice down so you can follow your heart, your your true desire, what you have going on here on the deepest level, that intention of like, oh my God, I want to go meet this person. I want to go say hi to this woman. I want to give this woman a compliment. We show you that it's okay to follow that voice. Nothing bad's going to happen. And most women actually, if you do it the right way, they really appreciate uh, the attention. They appreciate uh, a genuine compliment from a guy who's, who's talking to them with respect as, as you should. Simple as that. So, and that's, that was the point of everything I've been doing over so many years. Be you, express yourself fearlessly, be authentic, and everything will be fine. It's not about manipulating anyone into doing anything. So basically, at the end of our courses, guys are, are fearless in their ability to uh, approach anyone and express themselves authentically. So it doesn't really matter whether you want to get a girlfriend, you want to eventually meet a woman and get married and have kids, you want to date multiple girls, or you just want to be that guy who's charismatic who can talk to everybody at parties and make lots of friends, make business contacts be better at business networking. It doesn't make any difference. It's just if you feel comfortable being who you are and expressing yourself authentically and you're not afraid of rejection, the world is your playground. You could talk to anyone anytime. You're always the life of the party because you're living fearlessly. So that's what we teach over at Infinite Man. So you're welcome to come uh, join us on one of our talks and courses. I'm traveling all around the world teaching that stuff pretty much all the time. So BBC, thanks for putting it out there. Uh, please, I, I would officially request you to do a part two where you talk about the benefits and uh, good things that come from people uh, working on themselves and, and achieving social freedom and uh, going out there and saying hi to people they find attractive as well. Uh, I am available for an interview, by the way. So uh, I don't think you guys reached out to me. I was a little bit upset. I guess that's a good thing because I'm not really doing it anymore. But I think the BBC, I think they're doing, I think they were actually trying to get, you know, they were trying to warn people about this predatory behavior. And, and frankly, people should know. Uh, but I think even better would be to educate people about how this can be beneficial. I think if we actually taught men basic social skills, women too, actually, if we taught people basic social skills, that it was okay to feel attracted to someone, that it was okay to want to go and express that, that it was okay to walk up to people and introduce yourself and say hi and say, hey, do you have a boyfriend? I'd love to take you on a date sometime. If men got that kind of basic education in when they were 10 or 12 or 14 years old, we would not be having the problems that we're having today in society on many, many, many levels. So again teachers hey guys uh start teaching this stuff to the kids it'll make the world a better place mr ben greenfield you got sucked into our crazy world you flew all, all the way to bulgaria to speak at infinite man summit i dig it i honestly didn't know a lot about sasha or infinite man or anything else like that until i actually came here and i'm i'm impressed so happy to be here i have made a number of breakthroughs there are so many cool speakers of all kinds of things, all in one room, and the energy at the event is phenomenal. You've got to be there in person to feel it. It's just been out of this world, nothing short of magic. The most important thing was just meeting a whole bunch of really, really cool guys that I can connect with, stay in touch with. It's such an awesome event that I'm definitely planning on coming back in the future when they have one. The, the whole experience was awesome because I get to know so many people. Before I felt like lonely and now I feel like I have friends out there.